Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue on the CCMP based switched video series. So if you recall from the previous video, we just looked at LoopGuard. Now, if you don't understand what LoopGuard is or you haven't watched that video, I would probably suggest you do that first because LoopGuard and the subject of this video, i.e. UDLD, actually have some very striking parallels and it would be helpful for you to understand how LoopGuard works, why it works, and, and the environment in which it works because, like I say, with UDLD we're going to do a very, very similar thing. I'm not going to quite cover it so much in this video. So, UDLD, what actually is it and why do we use it? Well, first off, UDLD can be used on both copper ports or copper links and fiber links. But, I will say that it is predominantly used on fiber links. Now, let's just say we've got, let's just draw a wee diagram here to keep things simple. Let's say we've got switch 1 and switch 2 here, okay? And they're connected via this fiber link here. Now within this fiber link we've actually got different strands. Now I'll go to denote the top strand here with the green line and the bottom one will do with a blue. Okay so here's the issue here. Switch 1 is going to use the top strand, the green strand, to transmit data and likewise switch 2 is going to use that very same strand to receive data. Now similarly but inversely Switch 1 is going to use the bottom strand, the blue strand, to receive data and Switch 2 is going to use that one to transmit. So what that means is that uh, if there happens to be some kind of damage accrued to the link and let's just say there's a problem now with one of the strands, the top strand, the green strand, is now out of action which means that Switch 1 can no longer transmit nor can Switch 2 receive which would mean that in our diagram traffic going from west to east i.e. left to right can no longer happen. However, because the bottom one, the blue link, is fine, traffic from Switch 2 going to Switch 1 i.e. right to left, east to west is a-okay because that link is still up. When this happens, the link is seen to be called unidirectional. Okay, and if you recall from the loop guard video, these types of things can really destabilize a topology and actually bring in loops. So UDLD is designed to detect and address this problem. So how does it address it? It addresses it in two ways. The first way is called normal mode. Okay, now what normal mode does, if we just draw the same diagram, pretty much the same anyway, Switch 1, switch 2, join together with a link here and we've got gig 0, 1 and this will be gig 0, 2. What UDLD, if both of these interfaces are configured for UDLD, let's look at it from switch 1's point of view, it's going to send out a UDLD message, okay? And in that message it's going to be with a multicast address in this case. This is the MAC address it's going to target. It's going to send it to this MAC address. And within the message, it's going to include some information like a device ID and interface and whatnot. And these are identifying information so that when it sends it out and switch to bounces it right back, echoes it right back, the switch can identify the UDLD message and say, hey, I just sent that, I've just received it, therefore the line must be bi-directional because I can send them both received, therefore there is not a problem with the link, therefore there's no issues with loops. Now, the issue arises is that when UDLD sends that message out but does not receive a reply back, in normal mode what UDLD is going to do is describe that this interface is, un well it's going to say it's potentially unidirectional and it's going to put the state into a undetermined state. And what it's going to do is log that with syslog. Okay, so you can inspect that and see there might be some kind of issue there. The second state which UDLD uses is the preferred and the recommended um, and common state you'll see and it's called UDLD aggressive mode. Now the name aggressive is actually pretty descriptive of its function in that in the same example we've got switch 1 and switch 2 both connected with this fibre link here gig 0, 0 we'll call this one and gig 0, 1. Same again from Switch 1's point of view, it's going to send out the UDLD message with the MAC address multicast and when the message comes back everything's A-OK. -okay. You can see that the link is bi-directional. However, when it does not receive that back, 
UDLD is going to act in a little bit of a different manner. What it's going to do is, when it does not receive that back, Switch 1 is going to send another probe again, try to reconnect, aggressively try to re-establish, and it's going to send these out every second for 8 seconds until it receives a response. And if it does not receive a response within those 8 seconds, those 8 probes, rather than put the state into, or the port rather, into an undetermined state, it's going to put it into error disabled and just shut the port down. Therefore, closing the ability for the loop to happen, as you saw in the loop guard video. So that is how UDLD works, those two modes, okay? Now what I will say is that UDLD is only active when both links are up. So you might think, okay, if I configure this switch here for UDLD aggressive mode on this interface, does that mean I've got, what, about 8 seconds when this just starts pumping out these UDLD messages and this one's not configured? So it's going to shut this interface down? No. What's going to happen is it's going to wait till it establishes some kind of response back first from a neighbour to know that, you know what, this switch is actually running UDLD on both of these interfaces. And from that point, after it's been established that we've got a UDLD connection, if at any point after that we get the, the break in communication, then the switch is going to start sending out these aggressive messages trying to re-establish the... UDLD connection. So that's just the first point to make. The second point to make is that UDLD can be configured in both global configuration mode and also in uh, just interface mode. But here's the thing, do you know what? I'm going to actually put a packet capture up here, this might be helpful. Ethernet will go with. Okay, so we can configure this in both global configuration and in interface configuration, but it's important to note that if you do configure this in global configuration, and I'll just show you the commands here, UDLD enable will configure it in normal mode, and if you do UDLD aggressive, will configure it in aggressive mode. Now, if you do it in global configuration mode, it will only affect fiber links. If you've got copper on it, it will not be activated. To do it on copper, you need to actually do it in the interface mode, and that's the mode we're going to do in this example. Same again, we're actually going to use the preferred mode, and the preferred method of UDLD aggressive. We're not going to use normal mode. So let's go and configure it, okay? So we'll do UDLD, and the slight difference, because it's on a port, is we take the word port here. Two options, either just push enter, which is going to be normal mode, or type in aggressive for aggressive mode. So that's that. We type in that there. And we'll put UDLD on this one as well. Int gig02 and we'll do UDLD port aggressive. Okay. So now that's up. And if we actually look over at the packet capture, we'll actually see, or we should see, let's just do UDLD filter for that. If we look at the packets here, we go into the actual Ethernet frame, you're going to see, see that MAC address there? 0100CCC, CCCC, that's the destination, that's where we're actually sending that to, and that's what UDLD is effectively doing, okay, and it's got this information here, port ID, device ID, so on and so forth, and just some other information. So when we don't get that response back, UDLD is going to effectively sense that something's wrong. So what I'm going to do actually is on this switch here, I'll just do a debug, in fact, you know what, I'll put the configuration on this first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, because I can't actually make the link go unidirectional, I don't have a fibre link here, I'm going to simulate it by, you know that destination MAC address that we send the UDLD messages, what I'm going to do is put a MAC filter on that to filter that out, so then the link's going to assume that it's unidirectional, okay? So MAC access list, extend and call it UDLD, and we'll deny any any source to the host and the MAC address. The MAC address is 0100CCCC and CCCC. Okay, and we'll just do a permit any any and got any int gig02 and do MAC access group UDLD in. And just slide over to here if we do our um, debug UD LD events. We should start seeing some debugging messages. And like I say, 
because that we've actually filtered the destination out switch to it's not going to be receiving those UDLD messages so we're going to see that it's actually going to be put into an error disabled state in a wee second we just watch the debug messages okay timeouts trying to establish the neighbour but aggressively doing it, aggressive and once we've tried that, we've now got an error disabled state. See that it kept trying and trying and trying and trying, and just what what does it undebug all? And let's look at that. So let's have a look. And if we do show UDLD and do gig zero two, we'll see that the state, the port, is now a disabled port. Okay, so that's what it does. UDLD will shut that down. If we do a show IP and brief, or rather, just show and gig zero two. You can see that we're in error disabled. Now it's important to note that because it's error disabled, if I just do a no shut, it's going to have no effect. It's still going to be shut down. You see that? It's still down even though I've no shut it. The way to get it back is to do an actual bounce with the interface. So I'd need to go in and do int gig 02 and then type shut, no shut. Or alternatively, what you can just do is um, reset up. Oh. UDL, oh, was it UDLD reset rather? Yeah. So it's been reset. So the interface now comes back up. So that's that reconfigured. So like I say, that's the simple configuration of UDLD. It's pretty much there to detect when a link goes unidirectional because that can cause loops in the topology. And UDLD will do it with two modes, normal and aggressive. Aggressive is the preferred mode and it will aggressively try to re-establish that connection after a failed response, it'll have eight responses every second. If that times out, the port goes into error disabled mode and that's how it deals with it. Okie doke. So that's the end of the video. The next one I'm going to do is going to be on STP. Rather, it's not it's going to be on flex links. And that's the end of the video. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.